good morning to all of you so my, uh, i am dr arvind tomar assistant professor in pulmonary medicine my topic of talk is protocol based approach to viral pneumonia and cirrhotic so outline for this topic is the background epidemiology pathophysiology clinical presentation management conclusion little bit of ilbs data and proposed algorithm for such patients so coming to the background so viral pneumonia is a subset of the pneumonia pneumonias which were at one time called atypical pneumonias atypical pneumonias were labeled when in the gram stain in aerobic culture uh, no bacterial pathogen was uh, grown and it uh, the the pneumonia was not responding to antibiotics the reported incidence of viral pneumonia has increased during the past decades owing to improved diagnostic techniques Uh, techniques and actual increase because of growing population of immunocompromised patient studies on uh, community acquired pneumonias consistently demonstrate that virus viruses to be second only in the list of pneumonias behind the streptococcus pneumonia and incidence of this viral pneumonia is 13 to 50% of diagnosed cases accurate and early etiological diagnosis is important in because specific therapies are available against many of these viruses viruses account for the largest proportion of childhood pneumonias viral pneumonia decreases in frequency in healthy young and middle aged adults to only to increase again in the elderly many viral pneumonias have overlapping clinical presentations with each other and with bacterial pneumonia and many occur together with the bacterial pneumonia so it's difficult to differentiate purely on clinical grounds between the virus viral and bacterial pneumonias so why the diag the diagnosis prevalence clinical role and treatment of viral pneumonias are in flux these days because of again growing population and increased risk of immunocompromised population at viral pneumonia availability of sensitive specific real time testing available for viral pneumonias positive feedback loop that results from improved and viral pneumonia testing availability of safe tolerable and somewhat specific antiviral therapies and increased role of viral pathogens in the pneumonia and increased realization of testing etiologies of viral pneumonia and differential diagnosis so in the children we all know influenza viruses a b adenoviruses respiratory syncytial viruses para influenza viruses corona viruses and varicella zoster viruses so similar list is also for immunocompetent adults a little bit difference in the site of infections and the prevalence of uh, pathogens in immunocompromised host again uh, apart from the normal pathogens cytomegalovirus herpes simplex viruses and varicella zoster viruses can cause pneumonia the differential diagnosis of these viral pneumonias are other atypical pneumonias like fungal pneumonia bacterial pneumonia and maybe eosinophilic pneumonias a little bit of epidemiology so i could find very few studies of uh, pneumonia by viral pathogens in cirrhotic patients the, those the, all studies i could find from the india is from our institute this is from our institute now showing this the monthly distribution of uh, isolated virus so you can see one peak in the month of december and the most prevalent pathogen was rhinoviruses followed by influenza and respiratory syncytial viruses second peak you can notice <coughs> in the month of monsoon during monsoon that is july august season and uh, the rest of the months february march april may there is a low activity of viruses so distribution of respiratory pathogens and their mode of acquisition in patient again you can see that out of 135 patients the isolated viral <coughs> etiology is third 30 and 13 of them are community acquired 17 of them are hospital acquired the most common being the rhinovirus followed by influenza corona virus respiratory syncytial virus and other so so there was concomitant infection in the with the bacterial pathogens also and we can see there is no significant difference between community acquired and hospital acquired pneumonia as far as frequency is concerned 
एक्सेप्ट क्लेप्शियल निमोनिया एंड स्टेफिलोकोकोसोरियस बैक्टीरिया विच आर ऑफ कोर्स मोर प्रिवलेंट इन हॉस्पिटल निमोनिया now we can see that again from the same study uh, there is no difference between the site of isolation age may gender and community and hospital acquired pneumonia but the mortality see in the from this is from the icu setting the mortality is 83.3% when patient is infected with respiratory virus and it is dropping down to 12.35 when patient is without respiratory viral infection so so as far as this study is concerned the, the given the high mortality rate of viral infection in cirrhotics in uh, critical air, uh, care units it is almost like a death sentence 83.3% mortality a little bit of pathophysiology so depending on the viruses involved like influenza corona virus respiratory syncytial virus some virus can be uh, directly cytotoxic to the pulmonary epithelial cell or lining cells to the airways and there is a local and immune response produced by the infection of virus that is increased interferon type 1 2 and 3 increased mucus production loss of ciliary function epithelial cell death and increased level of cytokine some of these are beneficial for the host and aiming at the clearance of the viruses but the, these these inflammatory mediators also produce gut dysbiosis in the form of increased proteobacteria decrease <coughs> firmicutes and decrease anaerobic bacteria leading to <coughs> alteration alterations in um, pulmonary immune responses that is decrease macrophage uh, and neutrophil uh, function and decrease inflammatory cell recruitment similar is the pathogen pathophysiology of the airways there occurs respiratory tract dysbiosis leading to increased firmicutes proteobacteria and actinomycosis bacteria and leading to almost all of the time the, the secondary bacterial pneumonia so histine physical examination no pathognomic histine physical examination cues for the diagnosis of viral pneumonia as opposed, opposed to bacterial pneumonia however cues can provide the differentials of the viral pneumonia the common constitutional symptoms of viral pneumonia are fever chills non productive cough rhinitis myalgia and a headache and fatigue so similar is this typical for influenza viruses in which case the incubation period is around 1 to 2 days and symptoms normally last 3 to 5 days that's why we um, suggest that as a antiviral therapy in the form of anti flu prophylaxis or treatment should be started within this time of frame 24 to 48 hours influenza is usually seen in epidemics and pandemics in late winter and early spring peak attack rates for respiratory syncytial virus occurs in the winter in infants and younger than 6 months parainfluenza infection most often occurs in late fall or winter although piv3 pneumonia is especially common in spring a uh, history of immunization contact travel history possible exposure and in very elderly person the only complaint may be fever and change in mental status similar is the case with immunocompromised patients like cirrhosis those who are on steroid recognition of clinical picture of viral pneumonia or and risk factors is sometimes difficult the only thing could be new changes in clinical parameter or altered sensorium all of these finding can indicate the need for further imaging or other diagnostic procedures so again on the physical examination we can find tachypnea dyspnea tachycardia wheezing ronchi and rail so Uh, in the presence of short duration of fever cold cough history and typical of viral pneumonia and if patient is not asthmatic if you find on auscultation you are able to see wheezes in a non non asthmatic not asthmatic patient then definitely the risk of viral infection is high there could be sternal or intercostal retractions in children altered mental status is the sometimes only manifestation in cirrhotic patient because sometimes sometimes they are already drowsy decreased breath sound pleurisy pleural friction rub cyanosis and dash so what are the variables which can distinguish which can distinguish between viral from bacterial pneumonia is 
age, younger than five years age, the incidence of viral pneumonia or viral infection is high. Ongoing viral epidemics also, also give, give the cue whether it is a time of epidemic. History of illness in the case of viral infections usually is slow onset. On the contrary, in the bacterial it is rapid onset. Clinical profile in viral infections, upper respiratory tract sometimes predominate like rhinitis, wheezing. In the bacterial pneumonia, there could be high fever, tachypnea. In total leukocyte in peripheral blood, the total counts are sometimes uh, low in cases of viral infection owing to uh, inter interleukins, but in case of bacterial infections, they are normally expected high again. But this feature is does not discriminate in a cirrhotic patient. Serum C reactive protein less than 20 mg and more than 60 mg in bacterial causes. Serum PCT again more than 0.5. A microgram per liter points towards bacterial infections or at least concomitant bacterial infections on the chest radiographs. Sol interstitial infiltrates bilaterally diffusely they point towards viral etiology. On the contrary, purely localized global in, uh, alveolar infiltrates they point towards bacterial infection. And response to antibiotics is of course rapid in bacterial pneumonias and there is no in viral pneumonia. So uh, coming to the upper respiratory tract examination, sometimes at the bedside it is uh, sometimes required before sending or writing to respiratory viral throat swab panels that you examine in such a scenario, you examine in throat swab. So as we can see the posterior pharyngeal artery and fascial areas, in, in all of these cases see the pharyngeal arches are erythematous. In this case, uh, uh, in all of these cases, the anterior pharyngeal arch, posterior pharyngeal arch, and even uvula, there they are uh, submucosal hemorrhages. In this case, of course, the yellow discoloration is because of high jaundice, probably patient had. So this is a non-COVID pneumonia patient. In COVID pneumonia patient, I also try to take few pictures of posterior pharynx. I couldn't see any difference between the pharyngeal erythema between non-COVID and COVID patient, but what I could see is there is a diffuse pharyngeal erythema in COVID patients. So uh, way back early in 2014, this was the first case of human rhinovirus infection in cirrhosis and a with a potential fatal outcome. So earlier, I mean, these days, the uh, rhinovirus infection is sometimes taken as a commensal or a innocuous pathogen, which, because in immunocompromised patient, uh, could be fatal or should be uh, seen that way. One more case report from our studies during the time of COVID only that this non-COVID coronavirus 2 to 9 e strain has infected the patient. So uh, in this case, two cases of pneumonia and chronic liver disease patient where this coronavirus 2 to 9 e was identified as only infecting pathogen. Both of these patients presented with fever, cough and respiratory distress and were managed uh, symptomatically and were uh, discharged after recovery. Uh, a, a word of pathophysiology of SARS coronavirus 2 related COVID-19 disease. So uh, like most of the uh, other viral infection, the, the pathophysiology proceeds from stage 1, 2 and 3. In stage 1, there is early infection with mild constitutional symptoms. In stage 2, that is pulmonary phase, there could be when the lung is less than 50% infect, uh, infected or infiltrates on their uh, less than 50% and no progression. There is shortness of breath but no hypoxia. In when with further pro progression, the hypoxia also develops and with further progression, patient may land up into ERDS. So they, this is a case. Uh, this is a study from Liu et al. from Taiwan. So in this. Uh, they were finding out the cases of severe influenza A and B in community acquired pneumonia. So in this case, chronic hepatitis B infection, chronic hepatitis C, liver cirrhosis, CKD patient, they couldn't see any clinical difference between influenza A and B in the frequency. But later in outcome, we will discuss in prognosis there were. Effects of influenza on liver. So it is not on the, the 
that uh, influenza viruses affects the lung but because of many reasons the influenza the liver is also affected influenza may increase the risk of hepatic decompensation in cirrhotic patient which could be attributed to hepatic damage directly by the influenza virus could be secondary to immunogenic inflammation by t cell that is bystander killing antigen specific cda t cells generated by lung could also cause collateral damage of liver in absence of viruses detected directly in liver also because of certain medication which are used in, to treat viral pneumonia they can also cause liver injuries so coming to the radiological findings of the viral pneumonia so this is a case of non covid pneumonia that is 229e strain the serum procalcitonin was 0.27 and what we can see in this picture is almost otherwise apparently normal looking pav of the of the patient but if you, uh, we can only appreciate that in this region there is a slightly subtle haziness some of us we can say it is normal or because of uh, atelectasis in that region so uh, ct scan from the same patient there are subtle ground glassing in the upper lobes that is perihilar and also in the lower lobe apical region subtle ground glassing which appears to be interstitial so one more case of influenza b the x ray showing diffuse confluent interstitial appearing shadow so when the pattern is confluent so it is difficult to differentiate whether it is interstitial or uh, alveolar but in the peripheries we can say it is a interstitial appearing pattern case of influenza b in another patient the ct scan is showing diffuse ggr and we can see fine intra alveolar shadowing so because of motion artifact the film is little bit blurred again serum pct was 0.14 i have tried to take uh, the images from the pure viral in, virally infected patients so case of influenza again showing the peripheral ggos uh, otherwise in the covid time it is also suggestive of covid pneumonia this is pandemic 2009 swine flu strain serum pct was low case of rhinovirus infection diffuse interstitial appearing shadows in this case pct was low but because of the x ray findings i have selected maybe infection was in some secondary infection was somewhere else ct scan from the same patient is showing showing very typical pattern of ggos and interstitial shadow there are fine intra alveolar uh, intra lobular uh, opacities such kind of scenario you please write throat swab somehow is ct scan is done one more case of human rhinovirus enterovirus pneumonia there is a diffuse interstitial shadowing in between there is a mosaic pattern also pct was low so show, uh, purpose of showing this ct scan is that rhinovirus pneumonia sometimes even from virology lab that it has to be correlated clinically or could be commensal but definitely in immunocompromised patient they could be lead to serious diffuse pneumonia case of human metavirus pneumonia with pct again being low we can see only few focal ggo so it could be a bronco pneumonia pattern could be early infection in this case case of respiratory syncytial virus pneumonia showing upper lobe areas with ggo and some fibrotic density so if, when fibrotic density is start appearing such these fibrotic uh, few micro densities it could be a little later part of infection uh, one more case of uh, viral pneumonia from the post liver transplant patient because of the new onset upper respiratory signs we ordered this thing and patient was positive for para uh, influenza virus 3 uh, showing uh, ggr from the bilateral lower lobes and yes so in this case uh, ribavirin was given for 5 to 7 days and the apparent response was positive so case of para influenza pneumonia the bilateral upper lobes are involved this this pneumonia is again interstitial fine interstitial intra alveolar shadows are there 
similar patient unfortunately after 8 to 9 months suffered covid so you can see the difference between the uh, para influenza virus pneumonia and the covid pneumonia they are peripheral uh, uh, patches in the covid pneumonia peripheral predominant so what are the diagnostic tests used for viral pneumonia um, for most of the viruses in our institute rt pcr is utilized on throat swab or any other respiratory viral specimen like ball mini ball or sputum Uh, the, the viral culture cytological evaluation and rapid antigen uh, antigen tests are also available so in case of covid we were also using rapid antigen tests medication used in the treatment of viral pneumonia we all know for influenza a and b infections oseltamivir paramivir and genamivir are used oseltamivir is given for 5 days 75 mg twice a day the dose has to be adjusted when creatinine clearance is less than 50 similarly paramivir intravenous 600 mg single dose is uh, given both paramivir and genamivir are not available in, in india so genamivir is also given for for research purposes ribavirin so there is no definitive evidence that ribavirin cause uh, can be used for respiratory syncytial virus or adenovirus or para influenza viruses but yes it has it it case reports suggest that it it leads to improvement so it can be used aerosolized as a 2 g over 2 hours every 8 hours or can be given orally if aerosol preparation is not available as a 400 mg tds and dose has to be adjusted according to creatinine clearance cidofovir acyclovir and gancyclovir can be uh, used when the pneumonia in immunocompromised patient that is solid organ transplant or is confirmed to be related to herpes simplex virus group so for the covid pneumonia latest recommendations were that for mild to moderate covid and in whom the progression the risk of progression was uh, assessed that progression could be there bamla nivimab plus atisivimab that is monoclonal antibodies and casirivimab plus imidivimab combinations were approved by fda fda for the further beyond mild to moderate stage of covid these monoclonal antibodies were not recommended for the hospitalized patient the remi, uh, the evidence for use of remdesivir was based on individual assessment for those hospitalized patient who required oxygen remdesivir plus dexamethasone was preferred and hospitalized and requiring oxygen with high flow nasal cannula or niv again dexamethasone plus remdesivir and in later part dexamethasone plus other experimental therapies were considered the general management of viral pneumonia is supportive acute care may involve use of the following ox oxygen if patient is dysnic beta agonist that is levos levosalbutamol nebulization 3 to 4 times day flues for dehydration and antibiotics for secondary infections and of course mechanical ventilation if patient progress to respiratory failure the prognosis is guarded in elderly and immunocompromised patient we have seen in one of the prior studies from our institute that in icu mortality was touching up to 80% viral pneumonia may leave patient with residual disability even after recovery that is form of interstitial fibrosis kind of interstitial lung disease infant hospitalized with lower lung functions due to rsv are much more likely to later develop asthma so uh, uh, again the, the prognosis from the liu et al studies they show that uh, in comparison to influenza a the influenza b mortality was 43.45% but in influenza a it was around 11% so again it's underscoring the fact that many of us think that influenza b is little bit in our case need not to be treated with oseltamivir so we have to treat influenza a b pandemic strain non pandemic strain or influenza b so so same study showing that for liver cirrhosis patient the hazard ratio of 30 day mortality is 4.1 
rheumatology diseases 6 and for influenza B as compared to influenza A the hazard ratio is uh, almost 5 times. So this uh, one of the studies from our institute again uh, concluded that early detection, referral and anti, uh, early antiviral treatment with strict control of nosocomial spread is essential in patients with cirrhosis during epidemic influenza. So uh, about the um, future therapies in the viral pneumonias, even in the later part of COVID pneumonia, this inhaled nitric oxide, which is a normal constituent of airways, is purported to be have antiviral effect, uh, activity directly and also help through other mechanisms by uh, uh, inhibiting the biofilm formations and by uh, inhibiting the platelet aggregations. So, few more future studies which are which are there, which could help in antiviral effects is nanoparticles, dendrimer, micelles, lipid-based vesicular systems. Uh, RNA based, miRNA based, siRNA based, nano vaccine based on liposomes, viral components, nanoparticles, and elemental based that is iron, zinc, titanium, gold, silver, and other things, graphene. Conclusion The reported incidence of viral pneumonia has increased during the past owing to many reasons. In immunocompromised patients, that is, cirrhotic patients, recognition of clinical picture of viral pneumonia risk factor and new changes in clinical parameter is important as they, are, they may not report this fever uh, and other si typical signs and symptoms of uh, viral infections. Early detection, early antiviral treatment with a strict control of nosocomial spread is essential in patients with cirrhosis during uh, influenza seasons and also for other airborne viral infections. Presence of cirrhosis results in higher hospital mortality and post influenza complications. So this is ILBS data from 2018 January till now. So what we can, can see is again human rhinovirus enterovirus group, they are predominating 97, almost two-fifths of patients who were detected positive were human rhinovirus infections. So even if mortality suppose is less than one, it's if 0.4 or 0.5, the gross numbers would be high because of sheer large number of infections followed by influenza A. Influenza A, we could see that the pandemic influenza that is H1N1 and non-pandemic, the seasonal influenza was predominating as compared to pandemic. Influenza B was again uh, around 5.5 percent. The other significant causes of were para-influenza viruses among which para-influenza 3 was predominant from up to 80 percent of cases. We could also isolate human uh, metanemoviruses in virology lab. The respiratory essential virus was also a cause of great chunk of infection and one case of adenoviruses also. So algorithm, if patient present with typical sign and symptoms of viral respiratory tract infection and, and also patient is immunocompromised or because of the following condition and if there is typical influenza season that is uh, 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 early late winter and early spring or in the uh, late autumn uh, one can and if x-ray is showing shadows one can directly start empirical oseltamivir that is 75 milligram twice a day for five days and even for the contact influenza patient but in case of immunocompetent patient if the x-ray is showing shadowing or low PCT or low SPO2, we should wait for the influenza results because they are available almost five to six hours later, at least in our institute, then we can start oseltamivir. So once the multiplex respiratory viral PCR throat results are available, if positive for influenza A or B, we should continue these uh, oseltamivir and we may consider to give five for more than five days up to 10 days for serious unresolving infections. For negative, one can discontinue if the, the especially if other uh, DDs are there or other parameters are identified. For respiratory essential virus, para-influenza and adenovirus, consider for ribavirin, palivizumab or interferon. If all respiratory viral, viral panel tests are negative, search for alternate etiology and diagnosis or repeat viral PCR if suspicion is high. Thank you.